explicit group knowledge is, uh, what can we say, the, the main family of techniques is called ethnography. And there is many different things that are called ethnography and people don't, don't agree completely what ethnography sometimes. Um, so you, you can find completely different descriptions and, and interpretations of it. But, but keep in mind that ethnography in, in a lot of things is completely the opposite of the analytic methods. You know, the analytic methods I started with is are the methods that you use when you have explicit knowledge and you have individual people who are considered experts in the task domain. People who can talk about everything and can show you things and know what they are doing. So this is the explicit individual knowledge that we use the, 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 uh, the analytic methods for. And this is completely the opposite. Um, so I can just say there's no a priori conceptual framework. Ethnographers normally are completely upset if you want to decide up front what you are looking for. They say we don't know what we are looking for because we are going to understand a culture and a community of practice that's unknown. So we have no idea what concepts are around. So ethnographers start by, in a way, having a completely blank mind. And, and, and then they start to experience and start to build understanding. It's completely the opposite. Uh, and on the other hand, if you would use just an, a strong analytic method and a strong um, uh, ethnographic method, you cover pretty much all knowledge that you would like to cover. Because in a way, they, they, they are also, to a certain extent, valid in the other quadrants of the, of the, of the matrix. So, Ethnography helps you a lot whenever analytic methods don't work, and analytic methods, methods help you a lot whenever ethnography doesn't work. <coughs> so, I'm going to in, into quite some detail on ethnography because there's not too much literature about how to do this that really is reliable and makes sense. And what I'm showing you is made, mainly derived from Richard Jordan and people that have, have been working with her. Because she is one of the rare people who is willing to explain in clear concepts, how you apply a technique that doesn't have concepts, right? So, okay, so no a priori conceptual framework, which means that you start by bootstrapping. You have no idea to start, so you, you, the, the first activity you do is hanging around. Just be at the location where things happen and, and observe and, and try to be part of it. Jump into the water, right? And, and um, and obviously you are going to try rather than concept. What's going on? What seems to matter here and what doesn't seem to matter? Um, which means that you can only have informal representations. There's no way to say we are looking for roles and we are looking for... No, you, you have to find out whether it makes sense or not. And, and in order to represent, you need things like diaries. You write stories like a journalist. So you write your impressions uh, or you make sketches, you make photographs, you make videos, but don't focus on certain things that you should know, but, but just observe and try to find out. And, and uh, ethnography, by the way, is based not on cognitive psychology, not in any way. As, as soon as a psychologist and an ethnographer talk to each other, they disagree about pretty much everything, including what means knowledge. Because a cognitive psychologist will tell you knowledge is here. It's in your short-term memory or your working memory, in your long-term memory. And ethnography is it. knowledge is in the community of practice. And so they, they completely disagree. And, but ethnography is based on things like activity theory and anthropology and sociology. It's a completely different animal. Um, and, and the goal is understanding complex settings. Where, where the complex settings means that there are multiple things going on, there are multiple actors doing things, and there are multiple agendas. The actors could have completely different goals, and they are working together, and the knowledge means that you are able to, to participate in, in, in this situation. And ethnography is about natural groups. So it, it's not about uh, dances performed for the tourists. It, it's about how people behave in real life, in the natural environment, in the natural social community, right? That's what ethnography is about. So it, it requires really a different approach. And um, the focus is on the situation, on work practice.
not on what experts know or what experts have written down or what experts are able to show. It's, it's about what goes on in the situation. Um, so, and, and, and this is the label community of practice that people like Richard Jordan use. It's a li little bit different from what you find in, uh, in other types of literature. In ethnographic community of practice is a natural community. It's people that belong together, people that live in the same street, in the same village, in the same house, in the same classroom, right? Or in the same company. Um, and, and, um, and knowledge is not a thing that is, let me say, located in long-term memory or in working memory. Knowledge is the ability to participate sensibly, participate meaningfully, right? So this is knowledge. Somebody has knowledge if the person can participate in the community in a way that is considered normal. Um, and, and, and consequently, the ethnographers will always tell you that the knowledge is developed by people together. It's co-constructed. You couldn't say, I know this, or you can say, we know this. But, but because there's not such a thing as, I know how to behave, but we know to behave together. And, and part of this knowledge is completely, well, un pronounceable. It's tacit knowledge. People are not able to speak about it, but they are able to perform together. It's the string quartet, and as long as I don't tell them my observations, they are happily working together and understanding how to work together. And once you make, them, you make this knowledge explicit, we should uh, pay attention to his breathing and, and copy his breathing, then things go wrong. It doesn't work, right? But as long as it's tacit, it's fine. And, and anything that you could describe requires a label situated. So you can still speak about tasks, but tasks only have a meaning in a certain context. It's situated tasks, it's situated actions, and so on, right? And as long as you put the word situated before stuff, then you can still understand and, and communicate with an ethnographer, because now we understand what we are talking about. But don't try to think that there is such a thing as a task independent of the context, because it doesn't have a meaning. Um, so, ethnography means that you go there. You have to go to the office of your client, or you have to go to the, to the, to the living room of the customers of your client with their television sets, or you have to go in the car of the customers of your client who wants a car that communicates with the traffic regulation system, right? So, Go to the city. Don't talk in the coffee shop about about what's going on in the car. But find out by being in the car or in or in the in the in the living room with the television set. Um, and ethnographers should be um, well. They, they should be accepted, and they should be accepted as this funny guy from another planet who's coming coming here to look around. Right. So try to be accepted, which means hang around, show that you are a nice person that, 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 and, and show that you are asking funny questions because you ask questions about things that are so common that nobody would ask questions about but the ethnographer asks questions he says what are you doing why are you doing this and so on right so um, and, and if possible try to be a, a real apprentice this will not not function for you in the next week right but <coughs> Richard Jordan managed to be a real apprentice in, in, in the uh, in, in, uh, in Mexico, where especially actually was allowed to perform certain actions uh, as, as an apprentice midwife. And one of my students in Amsterdam, Magdalene Hoeven, she was in the, in the HAC office, and she was at a certain moment, there was a, a new civil servant who had to perform a task, and he was completely new, and she could tell him how to do it. Because she was an expert, even though she was not employed, but, but she was just doing an ethnographic research there. So, um, you are a participant observer, you cannot be invisible, don't try to be invisible, but <coughs> try to be accepted and, and then just observe. Um, now an ethnographer, in a way, I will always say an ethnographer has two pairs of glasses. So you have one pair of glasses, that's the pair of glasses of the researcher. You try to find out. So this is the glasses that you use to understand the analyst, which means that you are surprised especially if you enter an office or a company or a community or a, a geographical area that you have never been, you find out things are different, so you are surprised. But you don't understand. Now, the good thing is that you should start recording immediately. Don't wait till you understand. Actually, 
maybe if you would wait till you understand, you won't record anything, but then it's business as usual. It's no longer worth writing it down or worth making a picture or a video. So start making a picture immediately. I should make the picture of the airport of Alviero the first time I am, but, and I'm surprised to find out that there's not a big thing saying bus tickets here, right? So immediately record, uh, if, especially the things that you don't understand. Now, on the other hand, the ethnographer also has to try understanding, so he needs another pair of glasses, which is the pair of glasses of the people that are part of the community of practice. So, as soon as possible, become an apprentice, become, become somebody that belongs there, and try to understand from the point of view of the people that belong. Right? So you always have these two different ways of looking at things, and, and that's what the ethnographer should do. Um, and, and you really need the diary from day one. Because if you wait till you understand, you won't write it down. So this really requires discipline. It requires discipline of recording before it's clear. But anything you think, hey, this is remarkable, I don't understand, record it in any way. Write it down, make a picture, whatever. And then later on, you can annotate and say, oh, now I see why this happened. And um, so these are methods. And, and this is just a subset. There are many ethnographic methods. So but the, the first one, in a way, is hanging around. Just identify what's going on and, 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 and try to be accepted, right? Um, and, 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 and this is another one. You can start easily. As soon as you are accepted, you can ask questions. And, and to the people that belong to the community of practice, this might be very stupid questions. But you shouldn't care. And, you, and they should accept you ask stupid questions, right? And, and um, so, but ask the questions when something happens. Don't ask somebody, can we have a chat over a cup of coffee and can I ask you things? No, ask things when something happens that you want to understand. To ask, why do you did this? Why did you do this? Why don't you do this? And so on, right? So, so triggered by what you perceive. And then your understanding will grow. Um, and try to observe the experts who do things that they think are completely normal and to you look like strange, right? So, uh, and, and, and then final, there's one thing which is interaction analysis, and I will go into some detail. 